Well, after reviewing the tape, uh, you know, I think uh, we played a really good football team. Oregon's an improved football team. Coach Taggart's done a good job establishing a mentality. Uh, we certainly can play better, <clears throat> but we need to play better. Uh, this week is going to be a big challenge for us. Uh, University of Hawaii is the first conference game. They've got a bye week. Um, we're fairly healthy. Ryan Cummings will not play, though. He's got a concussion. But I think we're getting uh, a little bit healthy. We did suffer some bumps and bruises, but outside of that, I think we'll be ready to go. Um, I have a spirited practice tonight. So at this time, any questions? Right now, you know, how's Josh doing with an ankle? I know you said they just wanted to get the treatment going early and right. stuff. How's How's that at least early this week and you expect him to go? We well, swung by my office this morning and I think he's, uh, you know, he's in good good spirits and good shape. <clears throat> you know, we, we were concerned. He took a sack on the last one and twisted a little bit, but uh, he'll be full go the whole time. So other questions about last week's performance before I start talking about Hawaii? I guess is his upper body fine as well? I know the first half it looked like he kind of took a hit there. Uh, he's going to be available too. Tim, okay. is, is he coming in? Yes. Yeah, he'll be available so you can ask him some questions. Okay, I'll go ahead and start on Hawaii. Uh, first of all, uh, they're coming off a bye week, and um, Coach Rolovich has done a good job uh, with that team. He's an alum, and uh, Drew Brown's their quarterback, completing about 61% of his passes. Uh, <clears throat> they're pretty balanced, uh, you know, 260 yards passing, 230 yards rushing, so that poses a problem itself and they're averaging 34 points a game so big challenge for our defense uh, you know a good running back six yards a carry uh, Kali's an excellent receiver uh, he's getting 22 got 22 receptions 175 yards I mean some really impressive stats and uh, to buy a linebacker we know a lot about him he's 6'4 235 and a great tackler and so <clears throat> they play a multi uh, uh, different fronts which poses a problem, particularly for a young offensive line. So, you know, first conference game, and, and uh, we're looking forward to playing it. You mentioned after the Oregon game, you played a very good football team, but you got to kind of reassess some things offensively where some of the, the struggles have been through the first three games. After looking at film and meeting with coaches, where are some of those reassessments at or any, right. anything you need to, you like to change, I guess? Well, first thing is, uh, you know, and I talked before about running football. <clears throat> That's going to be a point of emphasis. Uh, you're going to see us uh, integrate Trey more. Trey Woods is going to probably get more carries. I thought he did a nice job. I think we have been pleased with is he's, he hasn't carried the ball a whole lot. He's got a couple good runs, but there's never been any negative runs. He's a big, strong guy. So you're going to see Trey carry the football a little bit more. Certainly, we need to take a better, better care of the football. Josh was careless with the ball at times. <clears throat> and then the other thing, uh, just throwing that out, Robert, is We've got to be much more disciplined. <clears throat> you know, when you look at the the errors that I would say are uncharacteristic of our football team, uh, you know, we had a, an unsportsmanlike conduct uh, penalty, a couple of personal fouls, things that were late, and that really is the tip of the iceberg. Uh, beyond that, there were other undisciplined plays within that game, and so we're really going to root that out. Make sure that we're a more disciplined, more focused football team, and we'll need to be to make strides. Those those occurrences, you know, typically are signs of a, of a losing culture, and we're not going that way. And so, I was really disappointed uh, with with those things more so than anything else. We're gonna we're gonna address that today in a team meeting, and then uh, <clears throat> offensively, I, we've got to be more productive. There's just no doubt we've got to be able to score more points, move the ball on the ground more. Josh got to get that completion percentage up, and our receivers got to catch the ball better. Uh, defensively, there were times that we played against Oregon. I thought we tackled well. Uh, we played fairly well. We missed some opportunities for some interceptions, but way too many explosive plays. Now, once again, you've got to attribute some of that. I think Oregon's going to have a good year, and they've got some good players, but we've got to improve on that. With that assessment offensively, Coach, do you feel like Josh maybe tried to force some things to happen a little more? Make make. You know, maybe try and force the ball downfield a little more. Or? Well, when he comes in, you can certainly ask those things. That became apparent to me. Uh, you know, the, the other thing is, I think some of the plays that were uh, unscripted plays, where we 
was scrambling where last year, you know, he made some of those completions where it was a scramble, he was thrown on the run. This year he didn't make those, at least in this game. And so between uh, working our offensive system better and then connecting on some of those other plays, it's going to be important for us to be much more productive. Gavin stepping in, getting the start, is it nice to at least know that he has that season's worth of starts under his belt already? It certainly is. Uh, you know, you have a guy that's played a lot of football last year at the guard position. Um, and so we have full confidence in Gavin. It'll be an important week of practice for him. You're going to with guys like James Price and Shiloh, guys that have been out in Austin. Are there, are there updates on their status mm -hmm. this week? I would say uh, Price will not be available. We'll know a little bit more today. Uh, Shiloh. Uh, we're going to integrate him back in, but it's going to be contingent upon how he does. And then who is the other guy? Awesome. Austin Ford. I don't think we won't have him this week. Coach, do you have much familiarity with the traveling trophy that goes with this game? I know it sounds like they lost it at one point and had to make a new one. Right. <laughs> you know, I think traveling trophies are great. Uh, and this is another one that we have. Uh, you know, when you when you take Kevin, what's the, what's the name of the trophy? Penny Olin. Paniola. You know, it's a one cowboy. Okay. I mean, we have cowboys and they have cowboys there. I think it's great. And uh, so a new new trophy, and not new, but a reestablished trophy. I think that's part of what makes college football special. What else have you seen about Hawaii? You mentioned, you know, they do the quarterback, but they seem like they've been explosive in a couple of their games where one receiver had almost 300 yards right. receiving it. Next game, a running back had over 200 yards. I'm not saying they're explosive like Oregon, but it seems like they have the, that ability to be explosive offensively. Well, when you talk to Coach Hazleton and the defensive staff, in my assessment, they certainly are. Uh, quarterback, uh, Drew Brown, uh, is can throw on the run, can throw in the pocket. Uh, they, have a, they have a tendency to, to uh, spread you out, and so that springs your running back. Uh, receiver, as I mentioned earlier, Collie's an excellent receiver, 175 yards a game. So they're prolific on offense, and uh, you know that's going to be a challenge for us. You mentioned the balance. Mm -hmm. Any sort of benefit in coming off with an opponent like Oregon that brought you kind of that balance attack that you can kind of do some things maybe to correct some things defensively? Um, first of all, I think we're going to learn from the Oregon game. Um, you know that was a <clears throat> that was a good opponent that came in. Um, competition brings out the best in you. There's some good things that we did, but. You know, to be able to compete against a team like that is going to sharpen our sword, to say. And uh, we're in hopes that we take another step forward. You know, Oregon did a nice job in the running game. And at times, we, we played our gaps and we tackled well. Other times, we didn't. And, you know, that's an indication that we've got to be more consistent. And this will be an opportunity for us to do that this week. When you're facing a balanced team like that, you just can't and I always say we're going to gang up against the run and the heck with the pass because Brown and the other guys have the ability to throw it or vice versa. Actually, they're moving the ball more through the air than they are on the ground. But uh, unlike us, <clears throat> where our numbers are lopsided, theirs aren't. As a coach who's kind of done a rebuilding process yourself here in the Mountain West, is it you know interesting to watch kind of another school with Coach Rolovich doing something similar there? Everybody does it. Uh, the coaching philosophy is a little different. <clears throat> I've appreciated Coach Rolovich. Actually, Coach Rolovich and Coach Hazelton work together as coordinators at Nevada, so they know each other very well. Um, <clears throat> he certainly, uh, you know, brings out a great deal of character. I know we brought a Elvis impersonator to Vegas, and I think he had a, a machete knife on the field one game as a Hawaiian warrior. So, what what I can tell you is bringing is a toughness and a mentality to to, to Hawaii football. Defensively, what kind of front are they working with, and are they more man and zone? They, uh, they're a multi-front. You'll see elements of 4-3, four, 3-4, three, three, four, blitzing linebackers. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to throw a lot of different uh, challenges uh, at us, and, and that poses a problem, once again, a challenge for a young offensive line. Greg, is there anything to having this be a conference game after last week where you could have that meeting today and then you kind of flush everything and you've got a conference opponent to focus on, maybe a, then a non-conference opponent? Yeah, there certainly is. You know, our guys <clears throat> recognize the importance of the Mountain West. Um, and the best thing I know as far as, you know, football teams don't stay the same. You either get better or you get worse. And typically, you know, it's not, it's not great to go through a loss. Uh, but I believe there's things that we can learn from that. Um, you know, the, the, 
the leadership and the character of this football team I think is outstanding. And typically when you go through a disappointing performance, you look at yourself in the mirror. I've done that as a head coach. All our assistant coaches have done that. Players will do that. And then uh, we'll, we'll evaluate that tape today with our players and then start on the uh, University of Hawaii. And uh, being a conference game, uh, you know, not to retrace last year, but we got off to a little bit of a rough start last year. And once we got into conference play, got on a roll. So I know that was last year, but I think there's a foundation for our guys to say, hey, um, <clears throat> we got beat by a good football team last week. We underperformed. It's an opportunity for us to bounce back. Are there any pros or cons with having a conference game but still another non-conference game on the schedule? I know it's not kind of drastic like the SEC where they kind of do it late in the year, but with just you know not having kind of non-conference all at once and then conference, are there any pros yeah, or cons to that? I really haven't thought about that because I know we're playing a non-conference opponent next week. We just know this one, is they're all important, but this one's extra important. All those conference games count. I know you have Drew back at long snapper. Is that more, you know, you know, we did well last week. We'll go through practice and, and evaluate it. Are you pretty set on trying to keep Drew there now? At this you know, point? until until we see otherwise, Robert, um, we're going to continue to to work with Caleb. But until we see otherwise, we're probably going to stay with Drew. You know, Drew covered uh, actually recovered a a, a fumble and some of it's his ability to run and go down and make a play. So uh, we'll work with both of them. But right now, we'll lean towards uh, Drew. Do you have to have a level of trust in a guy to, you know, take on two positions like that? It's unique anymore. You know, in the old days, it was no big deal. But um, and Drew's a really seasoned player and a competitive guy. He would not uh, embrace this opportunity if he didn't feel capable of really going out and executing at a high level. He knows how important those snaps are. Just to follow up on that, Greg. You know, Jalen. You know, you mentioned it's kind of uneasy to have one of your starting years, one of your starters as the snapper. Does Jalen Watson maybe integrate more into fullback work? Drew doesn't have to take so many snaps, or is that just more of an evaluation day to day with practice? Well, some of it comes into how many times we have a fullback on the field. Last week, we didn't have the fullback on the field uh, as much as other games. And so I don't think Drew got played out. Uh, certainly, Jalen did well when he was in there. So some of it's going to be contingent upon how we deploy our guys and what grouping of personnel we use, whether two tight ends, uh, one tight end, three wide receivers, uh, two backs with the tight end. That. Last year at this time, Coach, you felt like you had a pretty good bead on your team. You felt you were going to be really competitive and really good. Have you figured out about your team three games in this year, or are you um, still looking? No, I, th I think we're going to be competitive. I see signs of uh, really uh, some younger players that uh, are embracing the competition. Certainly there's challenges there. I, I think we played a couple of really good opponents in the non-conference. You know, I think – Oregon's going to win a lot of games. I do. I just I think they're going to win a lot of games this year. And um, we got beat by a good football team. Can we play better? Yes. But I think they're a good football team. I think Iowa's a good football team as well. Anything else? Okay, thanks. Thanks, Coach. Coach Munch, oh, anybody on the line here? Hi, Coach. Uh, this is Steve Zyper, Hawaii. Um, okay. It seems like Hawaii had two weeks to uh, prepare for you. Were you able to use any... Maybe part of training camp or anything. Look ahead, try to prepare for Hawaii and get extra practice segment in to prepare for their multiple attack. We we do a lot of preparation during our fall camp. This year was an elongated fall camp, so we spend you know a, a good portion on elements of both our offense, defense, and kicking games that apply to uh, all our opponents. But you bring up a good point, Stephen. Any time at uh, a program has a bye week. I think I mentioned that earlier in the press conference. You know, it's an opportunity to do some extra homework on their opponent, which would be us, and then also an extra week to, to get rejuvenated and refreshed a little bit. So that poses a, a pretty significant challenge. Okay, and finally, um, uh, with um, the emphasis of more of this week, are you trying to get a little bit away from a, a sort of three or multiple or a running back by committee uh, mm -hmm. formula, or are you? Or is it just trying to just get him more reps and still keep the, the by committee running back formula? Now, I think what we're really looking at is uh, probably getting into where you've got two guys that are going to get most security. Certainly, uh, Kellen's going to do some things, and then, uh, you, know, um, you know, our next running back, uh, Nico, is going to be in there as well. 
uh, but we're going to really try to try to have some predetermined uh, running attack uh, for Milo and Trey. Yeah, great. Thank you. By the way, what's the weather like? Uh, I, you know what? I've been grinding on tape so much. I left last night. It was real dark, and I came in. It was dark today, so uh, I think it's, it's optimal. <laughs> <laughs>